Good guys, welcome back to my channel, it's me Nate. Uh, today we're going to be talking about aviation practical knowledge today, or aviation theory. So apologies for those who are sub for aviation, um, so flight sim stuff that I usually put out, but uh, I feel like this was maybe kind of good to have around for those who are interested. Um, as I have been trying to dig through YouTube for video guides for 1 in 60s, actually I haven't found a very good one, so I decided to put one out myself. So what is 1 in 60? Well, there are plenty of other videos cover it, but I will go over it briefly. It is a rule of thumb formula that gives you your track error angle uh, using your the distance flown off track and divided by the distance traveled. Um, so in this example, if you're one on a mile track and you've traveled 60, that would be 60, which is the constant uh, times the one divided by the 60 at the bottom. And that gives you uh, one degree, obviously. Um, and I have a little example here. I know I'm not supposed to use red for maps, uh, because red can be confused with uh, uh, restricted and danger areas, but I couldn't get black to work out without looking like it was part of the map. So uh, the circles denote the areas with A to B, and this side is 30 to Munchea. So for your ground speed checks, or just for your navigation, if you're flying from A to B, you want to have a point here where you can work out if you're on track or off track. Um, and this is the time where you use your 160. So if you're from A to B and you're flying over Manchea, if you're directly over Manchea, or Muchea, I'm not sure how to pronounce that right, then obviously no no correction required. But if you're either side of it, then that's when you use the 1 in 60 formula. So um, to use using the track error angle here, if that was 30, then you would have 60 times 1 off track and then divided by 30, which is which would give you 2. So you'd know if you're on either side here, in these 1 nautical mile markers, you'd be 2 degrees off. And actually that um, is proportionate over these markers. So if you're two, it's four, and if you're on three, it's six, eight, and ten, and so forth. Um, so actually, pre-flight, you can write down your track, your error angles on this side, and you can use the same formula actually to do the um, correction angle on the other side here. So if you're actually overhead, you don't have to get the formula out. You can just look at your kneeboard and go, oh, the correction angle here was two, and the and the correction angle here and the track error was two. So I, I have my heading already set. So simple, um, pretty easy. Which is useful, but if you're mid-flight and you have to do a one in sixty using the rule, it can be quite kind time-consuming. And occasionally, I have done a diversion in a flight um, when I was doing my flying training, actually, and this was inconvenient. So, I'm here to show you guys, which is which is the core of the video, um, to use the flight computer. Now, a lot of videos on YouTube will give you the full formula, and I even had come across an aviation school on YouTube which give you the trigonomic formula. Now, I'm no instructor, you know, but I'm, I'm only I'm only a lowly pilot, so uh, I'm doing my ATPLs for the second time because I've moved countries, so I've had to do my conversion course. But it seems impractical to give you the full blown trigonometric formula, and maybe at an instructor level, it's good to have the background stuff to teach your students, but um, I have yet to come across this situation. So, to use this relative situation, here we are, we are 30 nautical miles traveled over Wuxia, and we are maybe one or two nautical miles off track. The easy way is to get the flight computer and move your distance travel at the bottom over the one, um, and then that will give you two. You don't have to use the formula; you can just use the whiz wheel. Um, I know it says twenty, and I know it says ten, but actually, anyone who uses the whiz wheel would know that actually there's a fair amount of uh, uh, mental gymnastics involved here with the numbers. It's not always easiest. Um, I'm not saying everyone should go buy one of these. These are actually quite expensive. I think they're about like twenty bucks or something U.S. dollars uh, for one of these flight computers. But, but. Um, all this video is going around telling you how to use the formula and, and, and the theory behind the formula, they all neglect to teach you that actually there is an alternative. And the alternative is to, go, is to use one of these flight computers. So this one from uh, University of North Dakota is completely free. It's on their website. Um, and it, it, you, and you, know, you can just move the computer. Oh, uh, I'm 40 local miles, track error is, is 1.5. Uh, you know, uh, 90 local miles, track error is 6.5. It, I, I can do it in, in less than you know, three seconds. Um, which saves you using the formula. So, for the, so I know this is, sounds like a bit of a rant, and it probably kind of is, uh, but there are better ways to doing the 1 in 60 rule stuff, to or to apply the 1 in 60 rule stuff for flight sims and also for real life flights. So I hope this has been useful for those of you who are looking into getting your PPL for the first time or uh, going solo or uh, you know just doing navigation in FXX. Uh, so this might be useful for you, and I hope it has been, and somewhat educational. Apologies to the, again to the guys who are here for flight sim videos. Uh, that didn't happen today, but I just really wanted to put this out there because I feel like this is useful information that uh, flight sim people or an aviationist would like to know.
All right, guys. Well, until next time, this is Nate signing out.